In a gaming landscape ever more infected with tricks and systems to extract as much money as possible from its players, the term pay to win has surfaced to describe games that grant the ability to gain an advantage or even power over fellow players by wielding the ultimate legendary item, the player's wallet. With the discussion slash slap fight ever flowing around which systems and specific games fall under the pay to win umbrella, one game set out to expose the entire practice by being the most egregious of them all. Built from the ground up to showcase not only pay to win in its purest form, but also interestingly some of the psychological trickery and bull baggery behind it all. Making for an eye opening and frankly hilarious experience, this is pay to win, the tricks exposed. The game opens with a text scroll written by a developer of free-to-play games, explaining that the game we're about to play has been created with the express intent to highlight and expose what goes on behind the scenes when exploitative and predatory titles are crafted, and even explaining that there's a juicy secret behind it all that is promised to be revealed upon the game's completion. To begin, we are thrown into the world, and what is apparent from the start is just how swift our new hero here is. A nice touch to see in a game essentially centered around tedium. Stepping forward, we are greeted by a child of Narnia by way of Arabia, who opens with the epic statement, MMOs are dead, before qualifying that with claims that contemporary monetization models have killed off MMOs, apparently, with mobile games being next on the chopping block. But fear not, our exotic pet enthusiast child goes on to reiterate that this game will look to expose it all before drifting into a rant about welfare and religion, which becomes a little too rich for me, as coming from this NPC feels more like watching The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe if it had been scripted using only AI-generated Twitter feeds. Working our way to the game's first settlement, and flailing wildly at some of the locals, we come across our first quest giver NPC, a tutor wizard, who ironically has the look of a man who legally is not permitted within throwing distance of schools at all, with our first quest hilariously reading, blah blah blah, who reads the dialogues anyway? Just shut up and go to the quest area on the map and kill eight zombies. After reeling from the outrage of being shouted at by a man wearing such a silly outfit, it did make me wonder. I have quite frequently just skipped through quest text, especially for non-voiced games, but now and again do read through it if the setting of the game feels worthwhile. But I would be interested how many others do though. One for the comments. Arriving outside the town at our destination, we quickly dispatch the zombie threat and are rewarded by way of loot with literal crap and a handful of gold coins for our efforts. So far so good, I thought. As peering up at the stats at the top of the screen, we had yet to spend a single dime of luckily not actually real cash. But upon passing NPC 4, I did shudder slightly, seeing a blacksmith in a pay to win game giving me an eerie feeling of what may lie ahead of us. Returning to the marriage ending birthday party booking that is the town's wizard, we hand in our quest and are given a couple of skills and some new gear. But upon trying to equip them we're told we're currently too low a level to do so. Seeking out the next available quest on the map, we end up at NPC 2, a town guard who advises we raise our level higher to level 4, by once again taking out some of the land's zombies outside the town, who upon returning seem to have adopted some advanced defense tactics, standing on top of each other like an undead gymnast act, as our hero wastes no time cutting them down to gain much needed experience points, as well as as it seems a smattering of additional gear that in its tooltip reveals that it is equipable by all except knights, with knight being our class, this being of course a highly relatable jab at MMO looting systems, with more than a few relatable occasions coming to mind. Undead hordes defeated, level 4 achieved, and new gear equipped, we proudly return back to the town's guard once again, noting our zero dollars spent while experiencing a growing looming feeling that that may be about to change. Once collecting our slight upgrade quest reward, we are shown part one of the game's lecture on the pay to win model, giving the player a chance to work for an initially quite useful item to give them some motivation to continue playing, as well as some of the acronyms used by companies when putting together these systems. Marching on, Stranger Danger gives us a quest that, quote, game designers can create without much thought, end quote. This of course being a kill quest combined with collecting a number of items while doing so, which as we work through we encounter the dreaded first meeting with the monetization, quickly filling up our bags with unusable gear, quest items, crap and a super box of all things. We are prompted to buy more inventory space, but resist we must, so after selling some junk off manage to scrape by with no purchase necessary. The only bag here is the one with one point to me in it, I thought, before realizing just how stupid that sounded and vowing to make sure that I kept it out of the video. Oh shit. Upon returning, we are asked if any money was spent and walked through some of the mechanics around enticing customers towards their very first purchase. But not this customer, as so far we have not spent a dime, and I'm sure that we will end up. What's that? I need a key to open the super box. Oh, for f sake. 
So yes, to progress, the first bit of money is spent, but making sure to go for the 90% off deal to give us the most bang for the buck, which on first glance looks like a steal, but it's just yet another cog in the machine for the company to do the very same. Funds in this pay-to-win game are added 10 cents at a time by clicking like a madman on the balance button, but being only 99 cents, we quickly get our gems needed for the key to our super box, that upon opening to no one's surprise simply contains another item that we are the wrong class to use. Next, we are tasked with crafting some potions, needing three ingredients to whip up each. Three bully berries, three important ingredients, literally called that, and three sheet herbs. Swiftly snatching up the bull berries gathered from out in the plains, we turn to carving down some goblin underscore O1 mobs to collect our important ingredients when this happens. Yes, we have been slowed to a crawl, after apparently the trial period for the speed feather running out, and if we want to return to a humane speed, we will need to buy another. Staying strong, but slowly going mad. The final task was to get the sheet herbs from farming, which unlike the speed shenanigans I had seen coming. By collecting three seeds, we will inevitably need to farm beforehand, and avoiding the most likely the pay to win. Touché, silly pay to win game. Touché. After the game revealed the inner workings of selling time to the player via these forms of purchases, and buckling under facing a six hour wait for all potions to finish, and having a movement speed slower than a bro on 420, spent 60 bucks to get us through with a few gems to spare. It was all coming apart, I thought, but in hindsight, I had seen nothing yet. Two more kill quests later, with the second querying whether the story is even important at all in MMOs, and featuring a very kind halving of XP gained after completing our objective, as our free hours of full XP were up, with this being followed up with an explanation that such restrictions delay the overconsumption of content, due to the idea of if there's not something new the player will leave, and to put more of a focus on meaningless repetitive quests and chance based games, over story rich elements and scenes, which lose a lot of their impact in the game after the first viewing. Another quest completed, we are given some new gear and are told to go and fight our first PvP battle, who although actually an NPC, has laughably challenged us, despite being a lower level, and will clearly be simply- Okay, I see where this is going. This PvP challenger has of course upgraded their gear, giving them a far superior advantage, so we must now go do the same with our weapon to stand a chance against them. In a painful upgrade system, the Dutchly does a great job of emulating actual chance based systems in MMOs, with chance boosters, items to keep the base item if you fail, and upgrade stones, of course all costing a premium. This I had to admit is where my mission to spend as little as possible in the game started to go completely out of the window, reaching over $170 slamming my head against the chance based system, with endless amounts of purchases made to ensure that I didn't have to start all over again slowly grinding away, little by little, getting closer to that coveted plus 10 sword. Failure after failure, until finally, it was complete. The secret that this game speaks of better be worth it after a grind like that, I thought, with finally being able to equip this new deadly weapon, when... Oh, <laughs> oh God. Enhancing the rest of the entire gear set took several hours of mindless grinding. Grabbing the same materials backwards and forwards, trying to get it all upgraded, and made all the worse when once accidentally forgetting the item that stops the damn thing breaking, when just about to get it all completed. This, as you can imagine, took the in-game money spent to insane levels, into the thousands, and when having to click at 10 cents a time, the items being far from the only things breaking, which would have been much funnier if I wasn't constantly reminded that this actually happens to people, getting hooked into spending their hard-earned money on systems like this. With this game even including the server-wide messages that I've seen in a whole host of games, alerting other players of successful upgrades, to encourage more into diving into the dark depths of it themselves, with interestingly the game claiming that frequently a lot of these messages we see as players are actually completely fake, and don't actually reference real players at all. Which makes me curious to check next time I'm wandering around in an MMO and I see this pop up, to test out that claim. So if you unlock something in an MMO and a random British guy starts talking to you, apologies in advance. Hours later and a full set of upgraded gear equipped, we return to the PvP Challenger to get some much earned vengeance. With now both a level and gear score advantage, surely now we- 
Ah yes, of course, when you think it's all over, there's yet another hurdle to tackle. This time being elemental resistances, with yet another chance-based system to grind through. To roll the correct stats to imbue our gear to grant us enough resistances to hold our own. With yet another hole scorched in our virtual pockets, we are told that we now need to retrieve a legendary sword from a premium dungeon, which by its name alone I'm sure will only be adding to the aforementioned hole, running across the land and paying another dodgy as hell looking NPC for entry. And once getting stuck in and challenging the same boss over over, the old trick of dropping unusable items comes back into play, leading me to have to take so many attempts at this that I'm getting dread-filled flashbacks of how long it took me to get a certain horse out of the chilling grasp of a certain Lich King. Fuck you to the moon, Arthas. Fuck you to the moon. No matter how many times we went in, it was no dice. But after a final attempt, a bunch of advertisements were flashed up, and our mission shifted to resorting to getting the sword from a hyper-random box, which I'm sure you can all see the implication there. Enough was enough, so powered through the utterly ridiculous amount of boxes it took to complete the objective. I'm serious, this is not sped up and was actually the amount of times it took me to get this damn thing. Of course, even after obtaining it, we were tasked with upgrading it, and also buying a skin to show off our superiority. With then as a victory lap asked to run around the land to cut down players that had opted out of spending real cash, to drive the point home. Although while doing so, there were one or two that I did have a suspicion may have actually been in the store after all. With only one more task remaining, to clear up the unfinished business with the PvP Challenger. With after hours of mindless upgrades and bullshit, thousands of dollars spent, and an index finger that would make even Quasimodo dry wretch, finally defeating the horned bastard. And with that completing the game, to have the secret mentioned at the beginning finally revealed. Now, it is time to reveal the secret. Are you disappointed that the secret was so simple? Yes. Yes, I am. Value can be subjective, emotional, or intrinsic. You decide if a game is worth your money. If it has value for you, then spend your money. The end. I don't know about you, but the secret being a fairly obvious statement is a bit of a cop-out. So here's a picture of Maria Brink to make up for it. And the ladies, what do the ladies like? Uh, uh, uh oh, there we go. Joking aside, this pay-to-win exposed game does actually point out some quite interesting details around contemporary gaming practices, such as games intentionally creating overpowered classes then nerfing them down the line, to lead to players moving from one to the other, and with it getting more options to spend money on boosts and cosmetics. And the developers can actually become incredibly apprehensive to release massive updates, due to once the hype dying down actually losing more players than before it was released, due to the VIPs that have spent hundreds if not thousands of dollars no longer having the top tier gear and items, diminishing their investment. And that according to this game's dev team, the drop rates on your favourite farmable items is far, far lower than you think. Overall pay to win, the tricks exposed is a bit of a tragic comedy when it comes to unveiling the contemporary monetization models of today's gaming space. It's tongue-in-cheek jabs at all too familiar tropes and practices, tinged with a quite depressing realization that more and more these elements are making up what we consider industry standard, and especially alarming when you see that this game was actually created over seven years ago. Although at the same time, things aren't quite as doom and gloom in some areas that the game may want you to think, at least as far as I'm concerned. Not yet. And on that note, it would be great to get your thoughts on this down in the comments. Please consider dropping a like on the video if you enjoyed it. And show that subscribe button who's boss for oh so much more coming up on the channel. I want to give a massive shout out to the channel members who help in supporting the channel. If you're interested in joining as a channel member for all sorts of perks, including exclusive videos, the info is down in the description. Thanks again, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Jesus, calm down! Oh dear lord, what have I done? Standing upon his steed like a segne, the former being mostly due to his reputation of being slightly less than accurate with his spells for unknown reasons.